Have you looked into the Project Blue Beam conspiracy? After the Pentagon, and now it's that mothership, the theorists have gone wild. Uh, fuck. I have looked at it, and I totally forgot. I've looked at so many conspiracies recently. Is Project Blue Beam the one that's back to mind control? Trying to pick up where MK Ultra left off. Is that Blue Beam? No, that one's not Blue Beam. Let me look it up. I, I definitely have looked it up before, but I can't remember exactly which one this is. Oh, it's to create the next Jesus, the artificial second coming. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea be behind Project Blue Beam was to somehow create like a revival of Christ type situation to spread a new religion across Earth. Things that give sub Banna in the resub whatever Imperial and Ashley. Do you believe in any conspiracies? Only a couple. The most notable one is Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, but that's not even a conspiracy. That's just like legitimately the fucking truth. The other conspiracies are like really minor ones, like beef jerky being a scam and shit. How is beef jerky a scam? Every time I mention that, people always hit me with like question marks. I made a whole video breaking down the beef jerky conspiracy. Be well, hey, now this is fucked up. I am not wrong about beef jerky. I made great points. In a nutshell, beef jerky is extremely expensive for actual two or three tiddly winks worth of jerky. If you were to make the jerky yourself, you would get more and it would cost less. Buying prepackaged beef jerky from any of the major jerky players is an actual fucking scam. It is overpriced. You get nothing for it. It's a scam. You're being gouged. Thanks, Risa Boston and Frosty in the Prime Infi. They, they either need to increase the amount of jerky per, per package or decrease the price. Those are the only two options. That's all food and services? Not at all, actually. When it comes to, like, snack foods, I actually think you get so much bang for your buck. I have, like, a fucking six-pound thing of Raisin Bran I got for, like, two dollars, if that. Meanwhile, jerky, for less than three ounces worth of jerky, it's eight dollars. Eight fucking bucks. Eight smackaroos. Something's not adding up. Yeah, because no one eats Raisin Bran. It was just a quick example. Look at any cereal. You know what? Here. How much is the same poundage of uh, Captain Crunch? If I wanted a full big whammy of Captain Crunch, it's four seventy eight. dollars Or, in fact, if I want to go to Walmart instead of Target, it's three eighty one. dollars And that's got like 18,000 servings worth of Captain Crunch in there. And it is literally half, more than half, or, uh, yeah, less, less than, uh, less than half of beef jerky-ish. It doesn't make sense. Beef jerky is a scam. But it's not meat. That's fine. I actually did another comparison. If you were to buy, um, what's that sausage brand? The one that makes the little wieners? Um, not Oscar Mayer. It has, like, the farmer on the front, and he's, like, tipping his hat. <sighs> Who the fuck is it? Is it Duke? I don't think it's Duke. Let me see. I can't remember. Then, then we'll just do a different one. Slim Jims. Slim Jims are meat as well. And a Slim Jim, a big Slim Jim, costs you... Let me see, let's, let's do Walmart price. Keep everything consistent. Big Slim Jim costs you three dollars. Or if you want like a 26 pack, it's six dollars. A 26 pack of Slim Jims, which is also meat, is six dollars, which is still cheaper than the two little fucking morsels of beef jerky you'd get in like a Jack Links. Slim Jims are barely meat. Eh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not the biggest Slim Jim guy to be fair. But it was just a quick meat snack example. Point is, beef jerky is a meat snack is dreadfully overpriced for very, very, very little product. It's one of the few conspiracies I subscribe to. Wholeheartedly. 
There's an actual beef jerky outlet by me, and their bags are going for 25 to 45 bucks. Oh, if you're talking about artisanal jerky, that's a whole new can of worms. There was a, a jerky spot, I can't remember the name of it, that I used to go to from time to time a while back, and it was pretty good. And the price, like, actually reflected the amount of jerky you'd get. You get, like, an entire fucking slab for, I don't know, a little bit more than Jack Link's pitiful little containers. It's really just the big boys that fuck you. Do you think the government controls the weather? <laughs> nah, I don't think we're at geostorm levels yet. We don't have Bucky's here, so I don't know that jerky. I don't know what they're selling out there at Bucky's. People have been able to manipulate the weather for hundreds of years at least. Brother, doing a rain dance isn't scientifically efficient for summoning rain now if you want to talk about something about how they can kind of like influence clouds <laughs> like that i know i don't remember what it's called but they do some shit like that but it's still not fully controlling the weather thanks to the resub pluto cloud seeding is that what it's called is it called cloud seeding let me see that's probably what i'm thinking of Cloud seeding is a type of weather modification to change the amount or type of precipitation. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Charlie, do your research. On rain dances, brother, I'm telling you right now, I promise, no amount of research outside of, like, your unhinged Facebook groups is going to confirm a rain dance has ever actually summoned rain. Now, if we're talking about, like, real shit, like cloud seeding, yeah. Then, yeah, for sure. But that's still not fully controlling the weather. How do you feel about AI technology? Oh well, man, I've I've spent many a stream going over AI tech. I'm sure, I'm sure streams tired of hearing me talk about AI. I follow everything AI related when it comes to like that technology advancing. That shit's crazy. Thick for sure, Tori. Though I don't consume jerky at all anymore. Because it's a scam. You want to see the most convincing alien, alien abduction story? Look up Travis Walton. Let me make sure this isn't just some kind of troll and this Travis Walton guy's not doing some shady shit. The Travis Walton UFO incident. Okay, let's take a peek. Crazy how we went from jerky to alien abductions so quick. So here he is on Joe Rogan. Where's like a breakdown of his claims? Decoding the Unknown made a whole video on it. Where's the cliff notes? Universe, the phenomenon is real. So they came here and took Travis in particular? Why him? What did he have that the rest of us don't? So what makes it so credible? It said it's one of the most heavily documented alien abductions. Is it because he had five of it, or six of his crew members around and they couldn't find him? And they all claimed a giant blue light? One hundred percent a bad drug trip? Well, I haven't heard the whole story yet, but I suppose that could be an option. watch the Rogan interview well I guess th I imagine the Rogan interview is going to be a lot like his other interviews just kind of prodding at like the current and touching on the past I was just kind of hoping like for a full breakdown with the so-called heavily heavily documented experience so I would have liked to hear from like the witnesses and all that but I don't feel like watching the entire fucking discovery plus thing on it at least not tonight He's resub lactose. You can just read the wiki. Not oh, true, I guess. Let me see. He has his own wiki. <clears throat> the Travis Walton UFO incident.
1964, during a hypnosis session, Barney Hill told his psychiatrist a story about having been abducted by aliens. Modern psychiatric consensus is that Hill experienced false memory syndrome in which therapy methods such as hypnosis lead to confabulations. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard that word in years. Confabulations. <laughs> That's such a fucking good word. Thanks to the resub, Jonald and Uwe Bull. On October 20th, 1975, NBC Network aired the UFO incident, a made-for-TV movie inspired by The Hills, starring James Earl Jones. The film aired two weeks before the Travis Walton UFO incident, which led cognitive psychologist Susan Clancy to argue that this film influenced Travis Walton to present his own alleged abduction story. Walton's account shares commonality with other alien abduction claims that are made after such stories appear in films and on TV. Clancy noted the general rise in alien abduction claims following the showing of the UFO incident and cites class, class's conclusions that after viewing this movie, any person with a little imagination could now become an instant celebrity, concluding that one of those instant celebrities was Travis Walton, which is something we've seen time, time and time again. So uh, it's certainly plausible. According to Walton and a number of other members from the logging crew, on November 5th, 1975, he was working with a timber stand improvement crew in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest near Snowflake, Arizona. Snowflake, Arizona, huh? While riding in a truck with six of his co-workers, they allegedly encountered a saucer-shaped object hovering over the ground approximately 110 feet away, making a high-pitched buzz. Walton says that after he left the truck and approached the object, a beam of light suddenly appeared from the craft and knocked him unconscious. The other six men were frightened and supposedly drove away. Walton says he awoke in a hospital-like room being observed by three short, bald creatures. He says that he fought with them until a human wearing a helmet led Walton to another room, where he blacked out as three other humans put a clear plastic mask over his face. Walton has said that he remembers nothing else until he found himself walking along a highway five days later with a flying saucer departing above him. Thanks to the resub, Dream Me and Bree. Just getting the cliff notes here, I gotta tell you, uh, calling this the most compelling evidence of a real UFO abduction is quite a leap. In the days following Walton's UFO claims, National Enquirer awarded Walton and his co-workers 5k prize for best UFO case of the year. After they were said to have passed polygraph tests administered by the Enquirer and the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization. Walton, his older brother, and his mother were described by the Navajo County, Arizona Sheriff as longtime students of UFOs. UFOologist Jim Ledwith said... For five days, the authorities thought he'd been murdered by his co-workers, and then he returned. All the co-workers who were there, who saw the spacecraft, they took polygraph tests, and they all passed except for one. And that one was inconclusive. Speaking of inconclusive, there's a reason why polygraph tests aren't exactly the gold standard. But at least they got 5k. That's something. These are some simplicity in the prime goblin and domino. These wild Travis abductors copied the movie Aliens. Well, maybe the movie just got it right. Oh man, he's even getting blasted by UFO researchers. UFO researcher Philip J. Class agreed Walton's story was a hoax perpetrated for financial gain, identified many discrepancies in the accounts of Walton and his co-workers. After investigating the case, Class reported that polygraph tests were poorly administered and that Walton had used polygraph countermeasures such as holding his breath and that Class uncovered an earlier failed test administered by an examiner who concluded the case involved gross deception. Oof. Eek. So that's how you pass polygraph test noted. 
Well, I mean, there's a couple different ways. I guess holding your breath's one of them. Travis Walton is actually an actor. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't tell you. Maybe he is. No idea. <laughs>